Morning Drive, brought to you by Golf Pride. Good morning. Welcome in to Morning Drive on what we call Championship Sunday. We hope to have those back soon enough. Gary Williams very pleased to spend this Sunday alongside John Cook. 11 wins on the PGA Tour, 10 additional on PGA Tour champions. Jaime Diaz, one of the great writers in the world of sports. And of course, Matt Adams. You can listen to his great radio program, Fairways of Life, anywhere in the world, Monday through Friday. Guys, it'd be a championship Sunday of the Zurich Classic of New Orleans, the only team event on the PGA Tour. It was virtually a year ago to the day that it was John Rahm and Ryan Palmer winning that team competition. Final round of 69, an alternate shot on Sunday that was good enough for a three-shot victory over Sergio Garcia and Tommy Fleetwood. And if you look at John Rahm, consider the fact that he already has those three wins on the PGA Tour, add six additional victories on the European Tour. He, run, he won the race to Dubai last year in dramatic fashion. He was the European Tour Golfer of the Year. Add to that, his first appearance on a European Ryder Cup team was in Paris in 2018. Well, by the way, he got Tiger in Sunday singles, and he won that as well. He's done a lot. And he's 25 years old. John, that, what he's done already, that's a nice career. He's really just yeah, getting started. Sure. <laughs> so at this yeah. point, today as we sit here, one word to describe John Rahm's career thus far would be what? Well, good morning, gentlemen. And the one word I would use would be efficient. Uh, what he's done has been very efficient. So in 2016, Kurt Byron and I were doing the NCAAs at Eugene Country Club, and we are curious about watching and seeing John Rahm. We've heard all about him, watched him play a couple holes, hit, you know, nice high butter cuts out there about 310, perfect positions, you know, just aim it down the left side, hit these cuts and go, okay, that's, gee, this guy's pretty impressive. So we get to the 17th hole, Eugene Country Club, calls for a high draw. Now we're thinking to ourselves, now what's he gonna do here? Is he gonna take out a three wood, hit like a little low duck hook? No, he takes out driver, hits this high bomb, perfect little shaping draw. And uh, we looked at each other and went, yep, uh, yep, I think he's got the tools right here. So uh, when you get to that level in college golf and you're the, one of the best players, you're supposed to get to the next level. You're supposed to win golf tournaments. And he's been winning golf tournaments on, on a consistent basis. So, you know, I, I think that his golf swing, Gary, is efficient and his progression into that next level has been very efficient as well. Yeah, I, there are a lot of words and, and you just use the term getting to the next level. I think he's been on an ascendancy really since he's, you know, maybe 10 years of age. My word would be poised. And sometimes I think because of the way that he comports himself on the golf course, we wouldn't associate the word poise with him. I actually think he's not self-defeating. He can run hot. He's true to himself, but I think he's poised to possibly be the most productive player in the world of men's professional golf over the next five to 10 years. He has 75 starts, Jaime, on the PGA Tour in his young career, and 36 of them have produced top 10s. 53 top 25s. He's only missed nine cuts. He has those three wins. He has five seconds. He has six thirds. Every time you look up, he looks like he's three or four back uh, of being in the lead, either heading into a Sunday or at some point on Sunday. You've been as bullish as anybody over the last three years on John Rum. I think he's poised to be as good as anybody for the next decade. Yeah, Gary. Uh, thank you. I, I, I feel like he's destined is the word I would use, uh, you know, obviously for great things uh, because of a lot of a lot of factors, because of ability, uh, you know, just simple physical prowess. He's got power, control, touch, creativity, very complete through the bag, as John was alluding to, you know, just has a lot of tools, a lot of shots at a young age. Uh, because of ambition, because of his competitiveness, because of his desire, because I think he sees himself at, at number one, he sees himself doing great things in the game. And that's so important because that's that's the fire underneath it. And of course, we talk about, uh, you know, the emotion and the fire and something that great players, when because they have so much of it, have to learn to control as young as young players. John hasn't mastered that part of it, but I think that's the next step. I think finally he truly loves the game. I think he loves this journey he's on. Yeah, he gets hot. 
but it's all about, you know, getting as good as he can get. And he, I think he really loves the process of finding out what's really inside of himself and, and learning from it and being aware of what's next uh, in terms of the, the next uh, uh, challenge, the next progression. So all those things to me are, are components that create somebody who's destined to do something great. Uh, Jaime, I'm going to pick up on what you just said, where you said the next challenge and next progression. The word for me, for John Rahm, is next. And I think it says something about a golfer. I think it says something about a person that there are so many words that we can use to describe this young man. Intensity, passionate. I, I love the fact that you guys were talking about he's not afraid of the stage that he's on. He knows that he deserves to be there and he knows that he has great capacity. I think talented is another word that would describe him. Smart. I love the fact that he is aware. All of us have talked about his emotions on the golf course. And I think about how does that impact him? I'll go back to last year at the players, final round, 11th hole, comes in as a leader and he hits it into that fairway bunker. Clearly should have laid up from there because it was a tree that he had to hook it around from the bunker to try to get on the green in two. Went four, went in the water, fades to a finish for 12th. But he's aware. He told us later on that that's all part of the process. That's all part of the learning. That's all part of what he's going through. So I think for John Rahm, not only has he showed us incredible talent in his middle 20s to be number two in the world, but he's given us glimpses, as Gary was alluding to. And Gary, you were talking about what's next for John Rahm. Clearly, what's next for John Rahm is to take it to the top level. We might be seeing one of the great players of all time. No, there's no question. I think that we could. You know, John, with that being said, that top spot is world number one. Rory holds it. Uh, Rory is in a great place right now. There seems to be ease and clarity for him. Uh, John Rahm, yeah. if he gets to number one, he could do it pretty quickly if they resume golf in the middle of June. Will he find comfort, ease with that? Or does that label as you associate that maybe with him be something that wouldn't fit very well? Well, that, that is the lifetime goal is to get, get to number one. Uh, what he has right now, he's got, the, he's got the physical. We've seen that. He's got the mental. He, he wins. We, we understand that. He loves the game, like Hami was saying. That's the spiritual part. The emotional parts you have to master. And when he gets a hold of that, like Matt was saying, and that comes with patience. When, when your emotional gets a hold of you and you become impatient, you start making those mistakes, but you learn from those mistakes. So there's no question in my mind, if he's learning from those experiences and those mistakes, that emotional will come along and he will learn from that. So when he gets to number one, or if he, you know, sniffing that number one, uh, and by the way, the top 10, and it's interchangeable on who could be number one. But uh, if he gets there, I think he'll be very comfortable. And that's such a desire. And that's a, definitely a motivation for John Rahm. Cookie, when you take a look at players who have ascended to world number one, there's a consistency in multiple parts of their game. One of them is that they win a lot, yes, but they also play very consistent everywhere that they play. If you look at John Rahm, his game travels. He won at what? One of the great Lynx golf courses in the world at La Hinch last year. He's won in the deserts, uh, Dubai, Palm Springs. He's won at Torrey Pines. He's won his own National Open multiple times. He's finishing in the top three, as Gary told us. The percentage is 24% of the time. He is highly consistent. He's aware, obviously, that he's on the threshold of world number one. He's not afraid of the prospect. In fact, he said, just like like Tiger said, I have to do all the little things to get to number one and to stay there. And he actually credits his marriage, his recent marriage to Kelly as being a part of that because he says, you know what? Bad days now aren't so bad. Yeah, Pat, I, I think that consistency you point to is, is due to the physical ease with which he plays, even though he swings awfully hard and it's, it's, it's pretty awesome to, to see that big a guy, you know, use that much force. It seems like it's very repeatable. Uh, there's not a lot of effort because he is so strong and he has such a, a wide base uh, in, in, in the way he's built, much like a young Jack Nicholas. It seems easy to repeat. And because of that, I, I think he's able to sustain a pretty high level without a lot of hard practice, a lot of strain. You don't see him fiddling with his golf swing very much in America, just checks with him once a year. It's a game that you know is easy to maintain, relatively speaking. And I think that's something that when you get to number one, 
that's how you stay there. You don't just stay there with the great play of, of a spurt. You stay there with a sustained level of, of close to excellence and when you're on, real excellence. You know, it's interesting about number one, we have made this thing a thing uh, because the guy who had the death grip on it made it a non-starter as far as it being important and that, and that being Tiger. Matt, you used the word aware. I think he is very aware but without being self-conscious. And that foam finger, that big old number one, I, I think can be something that can make you a little bit more <laughs> self-conscious. It's almost like you're defending something as opposed to going after something. Yep. I think John Rahm, consider the fact that he came to this country with a modest understanding of the English language. At 25, I consider him among the three to five best interviews in golf. He's somebody as an amateur who put on a Pat Tillman jersey on the 16th tee at the Waste Management yeah. and said, I'm fine with that. I think he'd be totally comfortable being number one in the world. We'll see if he gets that soon enough.